Hi everyone, this is Nechama from Arc Intelligence and in this tutorial today I'm going to take you through a very delicate grading workflow that actually has a lot to do with site engineering. Um, what I want to do is take this drainage channel or I don't know, you can call it a river, whatever, and just create a new drainage channel over here that has a consistent slope and create sloped um, sides that would connect seamlessly to the existing topography. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, let's move to a floor plan view. I like to work on a floor plan view better with these situations. And to start, I want to do some calculations. So you can see that I already used um, some detail lines to kind of define the shape of the river that I want to have here. And I will start by placing two spot elevations to understand the start and end elevation. And then I would actually select... Um, the center line, the data line that I created before, and use the environment total length option to see what is the length of all these lines together. So this would allow me to calculate the overall or the average slope that I want to give to my new um, channel. All right, so once I have this information in mind, let's uh, get started and creating our new topography. I'm gonna move to wireframe mode because I want my new channel to be a little bit under the existing one. Um, and let's click on environment and open the topography tools. I'm going to start by placing the start elevation point at the top of my channel, 298.65 that's the elevation that I chose to start with so a little bit lower than what is existing now I'm going to move to the slope path tool and I'm going to click once on the existing point and the second time on the end of the arc I'm going to select the slope method because basically you can either um, select by start, you can either define a slope by start and end elevation or just by defining a slope. So I'm going to choose to define a slope negative 8%. That's the value that I want to go with. So once I have the start point, the end point, my slope defined, I'm going to use the arc slider to just give it the shape of the arc um, that I want to create. And once I'm happy with the result, let's click on insert points. So I'm going to do it again. Um, click on that last point over here. Then at the end of the arc, I'm just guessing again, move the arc slider to get the correct shape that I want. And of course, at the slope value, let me put negative 8%. Click on insert points when I'm happy. And I'm just going to do that again. Make it straight, insert points, and that's great. So for the other side of the river, what I actually want to do is um, I could actually do the same process once again, but I want to show you a different method. Um, I will just copy the main points um, and then use the insert midpoint to complete the missing information between them. So I'm going to copy the first point over here. And again, I'm still within the topography tools. I'm just selecting points and using the copy tool. So let's select this point. That's the end of the arc. Copy that to the other side of the river. And again, I'm going to do two more points. I'm going to do it over here. I have two more points that I want to do it with. 
Once I'm done copying the main points, uh, in order to add some more missing information between them, this time I'm going to use the insert midpoints. Uh, with this tool, I am actually able to choose any two points and add elevation points in a certain shape between them. Let's see how it works. I'm going to select the first point over here, the second, um, make it straight and move the density slider to get some more points between that. Click insert points when I'm happy. And I'm just going to repeat this process again for the curved um, areas. Let's click on finish, move to a 3D view to see my result. Let's change the material of that topography now so I could kind of see the differences between the existing and new topography. Um, you can see that I already have the cut and fill um, information about that, but let's go on now. So I have my topography selected. I'm going back to the topography tools. And let's click on the slope path again. This time I'm going to create the slope at the sides of my channel in a predefined, um, again, slow percentage. And at the next stage, I'm going to see how they connect together. So again, slow path, I'm selecting the first point, clicking on the last point. Let's define it by slope right now and give it a 50% slope. Insert points when I'm happy. And I'm just going to do it a few more times along um, this channel. 50% slope, insert points. Um, I'm creating a very big surface. I'm doing that on purpose. You will see in a second how we will be able to kind of split it to make it fit um, the correct topography. If I move to a 3D view, you can already see that I have the intersection between the existing and proposed design. But again, this one would be easier for me to do in a plan view. I'm going to move back to a plan view, um, move to consistent colors. And now I'm going to use a simple detail lines that detail line that I would draw in order to understand where to cut off the existing ground and replace it with the new one. So again, let's fast forward as I'm taking um, the detail line over here and just according to the eye, um, drawing it along the intersection between the two topographies. The last step is very, very simple. I'm going to messing inside split surface and I'm splitting the existing topography in a way that I would be able to simply delete the existing drainage channel. Don't worry, in a different phase, in another view and in a different phase in this project, I have the existing ground. So I'm not going to lose this information. I'm just deleting it from the new construction phase. I'm going to do the same thing with the new topography. I'm going to use the detail line that I draw to just delete the extra uh, part of the surface on the sides. And now let's move to 3D view and see how beautifully the new and existing topographies intersect together. I actually have a um, place here where I kind of missed. So I can go back to the topography tools, maybe delete a couple of points and maybe use the from edge tool to just add another point, make them connect a little bit better. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the result. And the nice thing is that when I select my new drainage channel, you can see that it that it can already show me the cat and fill quantities um, in this area. Another nice trick to just wrap up this workflow, let's move to a section view. And in this section, I will move to show the existing phase and using environment surface profile feature, 
I would place a red detail line over the existing topography. Now let's go back to the new construction phase and use environment surface profile feature again to place um, a violet detail line over the river. So that gives me a really nice section view that shows that new and existing um, drainage channel altogether. So if you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more um, tips and tricks.